Well, hi again, boys and girls. Here we are um, in the uh, sales room uh, to kind of give you a little report on uh, a sneak preview we got from Ford Motor Company on the F-150 Lightning. Um, I think that Ford's got a real winner. Uh, I, I didn't get a chance, we didn't get a chance to actually drive it. Uh, we did, Corey and I did drive in it and uh, we were kind of impressed with that. And we got a chance to crawl underneath it and we got a chance to look at their, their new style frunk and the, um, and the, the tailgate area and whatnot. The, uh, actually, I think what it really, uh, it's the workability of the truck that kind of uh, caught my attention. This isn't something that um, is just uh, an, another vehicle. Um, I, I spent a lot of time as a kid um, working in construction and whatnot, and I know how valuable things are, some things are, like, for instance, power. Uh, I don't like generators a whole lot because they smell and, um, and uh, they give you a headache at the end of the day. Having something I can just plug into in the, uh, in the back of the bed, that, that kind of like works for me. I, I like that. And uh, so why don't you uh, jump in, Corey? What? Well, what was impressive is they had a team of people there yeah. ready for us. And the first thing they showed us was the frunk. And they walk in and they, they click the button on the, on the key fob and the frunk power opens. And lo and behold, what they have in there is two golf bags. Not one, two. So when I first saw the frunk, I was like, yeah, that's that's useful, but to seeing how big it is in person, they said, what, 400 pound payload? Yeah. Now you're talking, you know, CUV trunk size. Yeah. And that's what I was impressed by right away. Yeah. I also like the, uh, the versatility of the frunk. They've got a separate little trap door type of a thing. And then the multifunction lid, so we've got the um, non-skid mat, uh, yeah. which is removable, and so we've got two sides here. We've got the non-skid side here. And on the back side, we've got more of a take the mat off, and then we've got a couple functionals like a trinket tray or rulers, uh, kind of using this as a workstation. Mm. Uh, because we've got 2.4 kilowatts of power available with the four uh, 120s and oh, two wow. USBs. Mm. So you could use this as a workstation, and then you could power your worksite tools, or you could move your tailgate up front, um, you know, TV, craft pots, um, speakers, all sorts of things. Uh, and then we. Um, you noticed, I, I'm sure you noticed when we were pulling the golf hooks yeah. out that we've got this low, uh, you know, that we didn't right, try yeah. to go up and over the grill yeah. by integrating the grill to the hood. It allowed mm -hmm. us to get this really nice uh, load height in for yeah. lifting heavy items because it's got 400 pounds of payload. Yeah, it's so it makes right it really height. easy. Yeah. It's just so like someone perfect. like my size, I'm going to you know, be able to move my heavy luggage in there. Yeah. You can fit uh, two carry-ons in a check bag and have a little bit of room left over. Um, and I really uh, wanted to highlight the lighting because the integrated grill allowed us to put the lights here. Mm -hmm. They're not shining in your face. You're not blocking them with your cargo. Yeah. And because we've got two independent light sources, you're not shadowing your work. That's cool. So that makes it really nice to work inside. Plus, it also has uh, the one thing I did like about the Maki, or one of the things I liked about the Maki, and that was the drain. I like that drain. I, I hope uh, Tesla puts that in, and um, and, and I, I really think that that uh, that they did a good job there. And although they, we rode in the Platinum version, which was amazing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. They did have a, uh, was that a SLT or a Lariat? Lariat. It was a Lariat, yeah. yeah. They had a Lariat inside. Now, I'll have to look closer at to what makes a Platinum a Platinum. When we rode in that Platinum, it was like you took an F-150, put a, an electric powertrain in it that worked just as good as a Tesla, and then they used a Ram 1500 interior. Seeing that big mm. screen from the, uh, from the Mach-E inside there just gave me the same feeling I got when I first rode in a Ram 1500 with the big 12 inch screen. Yeah, right. And I thought it would be uh, kind of out of place seeing the huge touch screen, but it's now commonplace. No, it actually looks good. And the, uh, the, the feature that they've got where everything flips down and um, and you can turn it into your, your little office, your workspace. That's really, really, really handy. I, I like that a lot. There's a lot of good things. If you're a utilitarian user of, um, of these, uh, these types of trucks or a pickup truck, this is gonna be very, very handy, very and handy. One thing I liked about our visit beyond just the uh, seeing the EV truck was the energy on the campus at Ford Motor Company. So I have yeah. been to multiple OEM 
campuses over the last five years. Some are hopping with life and energy. Others seem to be quiet and mundane. And it was bustling there. I don't know yeah. what your thought was, Sandy. You I, haven't been back to Ford no. in a decade? Uh, last, last job we did, I think, was in uh, 2006 or 2007 or something like that. But anyway, it seemed to be, you know, my impression was slightly different. The guys who were there were hopping around. By the way, it's, I, I, I forgot to mention that um, um, Austin Stowe and, um, and Emma Berg were the two people who kind of like made all this thing happen, and I, I do thank them a lot for that. Um, I was, uh, when we were going around the, uh, the, the circuit, uh, my impression was that we were on a, a susp air suspension mm -hmm. ride. He, uh, he mentioned that, you know, uh, it was independent suspension and that was obvious, but, but I thought it was a little more than that. When we were driving it, it just seemed, yeah. I mean, maybe they got any roll control it, or something on it as well, because it, when we went into the banks on the turn, we didn't really, we didn't really uh, feel that. Yeah, it was, my impression is a truck rides better, better fully loaded. So yeah. I've owned a truck, I owned a truck for years. It was a 2500. Unloaded that thing was rough over bumps, but I packed it full of stuff for tailgating and all of a sudden it rode really smooth. So it felt like you had a correctly loaded truck. That's what mm. it felt like to me. Yeah with a lower center of gravity than you'd normally be used to, because typically when you load a truck, it's adversely affecting the center of gravity if it's up yeah, in the bed. Right, yeah. um, that's the feeling I got, but really impressed with the ride. Now granted, we were on a relatively smooth track. We didn't go over any that's, bumps. Or, yeah, that's true. It would have been great if we could have got over some Belgian blocks or something, but, but there was, um, you know, I, I'm sure that I'm sure that the same the circuit that we went on was the same one they did for the press. Press people. Um, it's been my impression anyway that a lot of them aren't really deeply into uh, taking high bank curves and especially not over Belgian blocks and things yeah. like that. So they probably had to be a little more cautious. But I would have I would have really liked that. Yeah. So once we got back inside. I joke well, with before we do that, oh, yeah. we should be talking about the 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 other trick uh, feature that they've got, which is the uh, the trailer trailer tow. Man, that is a cool idea. So you plug in the type of trailer that you have, and if it's something non-standard, then what you can do is you can put in the length, the width, you can put in the, the weight, weight, axles, the bra the yeah. braking yeah. type, the height. Um, and then, what you and do whether it's pointed or, or a, like flat. whether you're pulling a brick, there was a lot of good things there that he could pop in in order to calculate the range that you're actually going to get with, uh, with your truck. Beyond just typing in the calculated stats of the trailer, you then go validate that. So they want they want you to drive it 10 miles to validate that yes, your trailer is affecting the range by, this by the stats that it's calculated. Then they also said they're going to collect all that data, and over time they'll have a a better algorithm to right. predict range. They wanted to alleviate the fear of you get in the truck, it says 150 miles of range. You throw a trailer on, now you may only have 120 or 100. Well, no, or it's 90. going to drop even more than that. Yeah. It's like a third yeah. that you get rid of, and, and that's if it's on the flat. Yeah. If we start going up hills and whatnot, then things change dramatically. So hopefully. They've taken that into account um, when, when they've got their, their towing package all calculated in. Another thing we learned on the ride and drive was they're not going to prioritize the high dollar trucks first. 20% right. of their sales are fleet. So that $39,000 fleet truck, they're going to start selling simultaneously with mm. the Lariat and the, uh, the high-end Platinum. The Platinum. That's not something we see other EV startups do. No. Or even General Motors. So General Motors is leading with Hummer and Cadillac, and not only just Hummer and Cadillac, with, which are traditionally more expensive, they're leading with the high dollar trim levels right, right. of the Hummer and the Lyric. Uh, Lariat, yeah. Lyric. Oh, Lyric, sorry, um, yeah, you shift gear to GM. To yeah. GM, yeah. Um, so I thought that was refreshing that they're they're listening to their customers and they realize there's a lot of fleets out there. Uh, 
you know, uh, businesses that have trucks for, mm. you know, pest control or lawn right, service, yeah. they're not going to yeah. leave them behind a year or two. Yeah. I think it's a smart move. But I will tell you that when I was at Ford, that's, we did the same thing because you want a quick recovery on those things that, um, that you've had to invest in. And in this case, there's a lot less investing, I guess. Than uh, than uh, a standard um, you know clean sheet approach would have uh, would have uh, would have uh, yeah. delivered to them, so I I think that um, I think the strategy in their case worked out real is going to work out real yeah. well, and by the way um, I know that I uh, I recommended when I first saw it get the best buy the platinum because I figured that would be coming out first. Um, after talking to the folks there, they say the best bang for the buck. Or, the, the best uh, the best value for your money is probably going to be the Lariat and um, so uh, so I'm not going to dispute that they know what they're talking about so um, I'll back off and uh, say you know if you got the money and uh, you want to impress your friends and you will impress them I guarantee it yeah. uh, then you go for the platinum but the Lariat is probably your better bet the rest of them I, I would never touch a low range anything um, and uh, so that's kind of like what I what the takeaway from the from the uh, the driving experience. Yeah, and Sandy and I joked before we got there. Let's see what they say if we walk in and immediately slide right underneath. Yeah, we didn't do that. But uh, after we saw the frunk and some of the other areas, we both slid under the vehicle, and we yeah. were pleasantly surprised to see that there were aero shields that most likely were supposed to be in between the frame rail and the outside uh, step. They were gone, so we could see quite a bit. So this is um, different. This is not the same as anything I've seen off of Ford before for the, for the independent suspension. Um, is this brand spanking new or what? Yeah, is? Yes, it is. Um, custom for this vehicle, F-450 never had it before. Yes, it was uh, very nice. Um, the one thing I guess we can do is like, I slid into the back first and um, and when I slid underneath there, I yelled over at Corey, look at the size of that casting. Yeah. It was phenomenal. I mean it sincerely, it was phenomenal. And, um, and their suspension system, I can see why we we wound up with uh, with uh, with the ride we did. Um, uh, the, the the rear suspension looks very good. It is, yeah. It is not a carryover from the Expedition. No. You know, we we benchmark so many vehicles. A very <clears throat> very large casting that that's pivoting not only uh, from the frame rail, but it also has a forward facing joint. Right. Um, really unique geometry that I haven't seen recently. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen suspension no, like I've that. No, I've never seen a suspension like that, never. Well, it's kind of reminiscent of something that I saw when we were working on the uh, Challenger 2E tank. Yeah. Um, they had uh, they have bogeys and one on. They had something similar that only was crushed down. And the reason for that is because you have to go 60, 70 miles an hour over a plowed field. And so keep, and the tank operators have to they have to maintain stability. They have to be able to still fire rounds. And I saw something similar to that, but I've never seen anything quite like that. And I never saw it in a truck. Yeah. And then underneath the whole frame, disassociated from the battery pack, was a relatively complex shield um, that yeah. was pretty thick. Massive. Steel. Massive, Massive. That's the word, yeah. So I would be comfortable that that vehicle could go over a field of rocks or a you know a rock climbing expedition and get high centered anywhere and yeah. it's not even going to come close to touching the battery yeah um, which really was the big surprise uh, for it, us is that necessary for the 90 percent of trucks that'll be going to home depot or the grocery store maybe not but they're protected yeah well i the the shield was cool but the coolest yeah. The coolest was the battery pack, and um, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on talking about it because Corey is so excited. No, no, see, <laughs> this is your show. Well, whatever. I I think uh, I think when I saw that the the battery pack was isolated mm -hmm. from the rest of the truck, I about peed my pants. That's kind of really really unique. Nobody's got anything mm -hmm. like that. We've torn lots of stuff to pieces. 
I'm thinking that anybody that, uh, that is um, going to go into the electric truck market, they better, uh, they better have uh, three or four of those um, um, lightnings to take apart and check out sincerely. The, there's a lot of good stuff uh, yeah. in there. And, and the, 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 the suspended battery, or yeah. the isolated battery and is one of them. The durability cycle for a truck is typically one and a half, one or one and a half times more rigorous than a CUV or an SUV or a sedan. Um, so with that isolated battery pack, they must have found that this is a way to ensure that the truck will remain high quality through the life of the vehicle. Mm. Like we always do, we're going to compare and contrast the materials, the cost, and the weight that it, take to, that it took to accomplish that, and we'll see if other OEMs follow suit. You know, the, large, the big three, yeah, even yeah. Toyota, when they launch their EV trucks, um, or even Rivian, when the Rivian or the Cybertruck get here. Mm. Um, the Cybertruck is the same size, the Rivian is smaller. Rivian will be like a yeah. Ranger size. Yeah. Uh, but that was really surprising for us to see the battery isolated yeah. um, because that is a massive, massive uh, item to isolate. Yeah. Now, I was, I was very impressed with the rear suspension. The front suspension um, also looks good. Um, it's independent all the way around. Yeah. We couldn't get a, a chance to look at what was underneath the, uh, the frunk. Um, I did see a couple of hoses, actually I saw quite a few hoses, so I'm thinking that they've carried over the same cooling mm -hmm. system as what we've seen here, but we, we don't know. And, uh, and I don't want to no. really throw cold water on the experience. Everything we saw, I, I kind of, by the way, there was another thing from a work standpoint, the lighting on that thing is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, everywhere you go, you're going to be able to find whatever you need. This thing is like its own little... I don't know, <laughs> floodlight stand, it's, it's amazing. You're never gonna be able to, you'll never have to say, ah, screw it and walk away from uh, your favorite S-wing hammer or something. That, that, that kind of stuff isn't gonna happen. You're gonna be able to find whatever it is in the dark with that truck. I mean, the perfect vehicle for tailgating. I Absolutely. know Sandy's mm -hmm. not a big college football fan. I don't even think you're a fan of any sports. <laughs> No, but after getting your arm ripped off, it, it, you, and both knees broken and whatnot, you just kind of like lose the, uh, yeah. the the enthusiasm for sports. But yeah. anyway, for tailgating, I, I, I am a tailgate fan. Yeah. Okay, to, so that all right to come back to the tailgate late at night, and have the whole perimeter light up to clean up is amazing. Yeah. To be able to plug in your audio, even a small electric griddle, whatever you want and have it last the whole day and then be able to pack up and drive home and yeah. not have the noise of a generator even the honda generators are quiet they're still not silent yeah but i just what an amazing benefit i just i like the idea of, of being able to get what i want and not have to have to worry about where that uh, where that carbon monoxide is going to be going to or coming from i mean Really and truly, we had a discussion about what what would be a commercial to uh, uh, in the future or something, where uh, where you see someone who's been used to seeing a um, uh, electric vehicles for their whole life, and now somebody comes along with uh, this new new idea. We're going to put uh, we're going to put uh, a flammable con uh, a flammable fluid into into a box and then and see what happens because kids don't like the smell of gasoline and I'm guessing that if you had a family there first thing that happened is mom's eyes would fly open what do you mean we're going to be putting something that can blow up inside of our inside of our car and then see the kid I don't like the smell on and on and on I think in 10 years that that kind of thing is going to be pretty much commonplace on uh, on advertising <clears throat> they're going to be advertising and saying, are you sure you want to go back to the past and, uh, and stuff like that? Yeah. I, I think that's what you're going to see. And kids, like I say, the kids that are sitting around right now that are 12 or 15 or whatever, they're going to be buying in 2028. So yeah. I, I'm pretty confident that my number is going to be good as long as we can get battery packs and electric motors yeah. and, and electronic chips. Uh, we, we did get a number from 
Ford, they said they're shooting for 40% EV by 2030. Yeah. Now, that number was not that number two, three, four years ago. No. So give it a year or two. The popularity of this F-150 Lightning, if somebody gets one, their neighbor is going to look at it and go, oh, my God, what am I doing driving this diesel or gas, whatever? Yeah. I think that you'll have this rapid adoption um, that'll push that 40% to 50%, mm -hmm. and then that'll get Sandy, your prediction, right on the dot, Yeah. 50% by 2030 or 2022, well, 2028 even. I, I can tell you for sure that I um, there are a lot of uh, automotive executives that float around in the uh, Detroit area, and if you go to any types of um, gatherings and whatnot, you're going to bump into at least one or two of them. And most people around here know each other. It's not, this isn't, uh, it's a small world in Detroit. And I can remember going to something just prior, I think it was sometime around Thanksgiving. And that's when I was touting 2030 and hearing from a GM, uh, sorry, two GM executives and a Ford executive basically laughing me off saying, you got to be joking. What kind of, what's, what's, who put what in your drink? You know, that kind of stuff. I don't know if those guys are, I, I, I don't follow the, uh, the ups and downs of uh, executives around here, but I'm wondering now where they are and yeah. what, what they're saying uh, today. That, that would have been in 2019. 19, probably. yeah, yep. that's what I meant, yeah. Yeah. Before COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving uh, 2019. Yeah. Well, Sandy, we have a meeting in three minutes, so we got to wrap up. Uh, okay, well, yeah. alrighty, well, thanks, uh, thanks again, all, everyone. Uh, thanks for, uh, uh, for tuning in here. Uh, thank you to Ford Motor Company for allowing us to have a look at uh, the, the new F-150 Lightning. And I think, uh, I think that um, even though we're basically out of the woods, and I know it's not as popular, I'd really like to still see you tossing, uh, tossing a little tip to those cashiers whenever you feel the need or the mood. And, um, and because Corey's here, oh. I will ask you to subscribe. Although, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so <laughs> anyways, so long guys. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more stuff on the Mach-E. Thank you, bye.